Hi guys, this is Terry with Futures.io. It is my pleasure to welcome Rod Casili for today's webinar, Introducing Collective 2. Make more money from your trading with Collective 2. If you have questions during the webinar, please feel free to type them into the questions box and we'll do our best to answer them at the end of the event. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, please do us a favor and give us a thumbs up if you enjoy the webinar. And as always, please feel free to share, comment, and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us a lot. You can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter with at Futures.io for news, events, and trading-related information. And without further delay, I'll hand it over to Rod. Great. Thank you. Uh, do you have to read that? Oh, wow. Now I have it. Hold on. Hi, everybody. Let me just get uh, get the housekeeping stuff taken care of here and pop this open. I think we should be good to go. Yep, looks good. Super. So thanks, everybody, for uh, for joining this afternoon. I know everyone's time is valuable. I really appreciate it. Again, my name is Rod Casoli. I'm the head of product at Collective 2. I'll tell you a little bit more about myself, but not too much in just a moment. I uh, wonder if anyone's suffering from or if you're playing the drinking game, new market high. Every time you hear that on CNBC or Bloomberg, I think we'd all be pretty drunk, right? So hopefully uh, I'm talking to a lot of trend traders today or the markets are working in your favor. So what we're going to talk about is how you can make more money from your trading and this will be a shameless plug for Collective 2, um, but what I'm going to do is really focus on uh, the business opportunity, the types of strategies that we think work really well for our particular environment, and then try to get through the material as quickly as I can, because what I find is that there are generally a lot of questions, which is great, um, because there's a, you know, there's a lot of complexity in a two-sided marketplace, selling your strategy, uh, what to price it at, how you do it, all those kinds of things. So hopefully we can get to the questions as soon as possible. Feel free to pop those in, as Terry mentioned, and then we'll probably address them at the end. But if there's something within context, maybe we'll we'll stop and get going. All right. So this is our disclaimer here. Just want to read the beginning of it, that the material that I'm presenting to you today is for educational purposes. So Collective 2 and myself are registered entities, but nothing that I'll be talking about today um, is a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any securities. Uh, also, the focus of today's talk is going to be more on the trading opportunity, Collective 2, a two-sided marketplace, supply and demand. We have trade uh, leaders, which provide the alpha of the signals, and we also have investors that will come in and subscribe to those. So we're going to focus today on the trade leader opportunity. I think that's more appropriate for this audience, uh, especially Futures IO, where um, more people that work with futures are generally actually trading them as opposed to investors who are not as familiar with them. So that's the focus of today is on the trade leader opportunity. And then here's the CFTC rule 4.41. I wanted to remind everybody that hypothetical or simulated performance results do have limitations. I'll talk a little bit more about performance and how it's calculated on the platform, how we validate trades, how trades are replicated to invest investors, but it's important to point out that no true track records are ever going to be the same. And for those reasons, all of the hypothetical and simulated performance results do apply. Okay, enough of that. All right, who's this Rod Casilli guy? Um, that picture is, of course, from four or five years ago, because that's how you always do it. Thank goodness I'm not on dating sites anymore. But I started my career at Merrill Lynch back in 1994 in the Beverly Hills office. And while I tried like heck to get on the syndicate desk and get to uh, do the underwriting for things like uh, Netscape and Yahoo and stuff at the time, uh, uh, woefully, I was just relegated to being in a bullpen and calling uh, older people in Beverly Hills and trying to sell them muni bonds. So I did that for four years. I was relatively successful but I could not resist the opportunity to come up to the Bay Area for the gold rush in the late 90s. So I've been in the Bay Area for about 15 years since late 90s. I am an independent derivatives trader. I trade every day all the time, uh, in addition to my full-time gig here at Collective 2, which we'll talk about. And uh, I think everyone on the line is probably familiar with the term derivatives. It's just a fancy term for you know futures or options. Um, I am a reluctant Series 3. I had to go back and take the test and get licensed because there are some tasks that I uh, do at Collective 2 that required that. And in my current role, I'm the head, the CEO and head of product. All right, ready for the problem statement here. We got to start out with a problem statement, <laughs> the obvious. Guess what, everybody? Trading is really, really hard. Let's add a few more reallys. Now, I know that uh, as future IO members, you're probably uh, voracious uh, learners uh, trying to find how to improve your trading and hone your skills at all times. And there are a lot of uh, a lot of ways I think people can kind of get distracted to why trading is so hard, looking for that old old holy grail. But we all know that no matter what your background, doctors, lawyers, MIT professors, engineers, people that have been really successful in their other careers come to trading and have a lot of difficulty. Now, I think it really just boils down to the three C's, and I call them competition, capital, and clarity. So 
they are really out to get you, everybody. They really are. The competition in trading, in my opinion, and I think this is verified by a lot of math and statistics, is, uh, is harder than just about any other profession out there. It's got to be. Um, I know that there are you know, competitive sports and things like that, but there's nothing dif dif more difficult than this. They're bigger, they're faster, and they are out to, to get you. The next C is, is capital. So most traders are just woefully undercapitalized. I'm sure that if you've been trading for a while or if you've read books, you'll hear about risk management techniques such as don't risk more than 2% on any trade or 1% of your available capital or trail stops or I could go on forever. But the bottom line is that especially for levered products, the vast majority of traders are very, very undercapitalized. And then the final piece is clarity. So you might have heard this as well. You know, why, why are you doing this? And then the responses are freedom, independence. Maybe you are competitive. Um, you want to make more money. You want to quit your job. Don't have a boss. All those kinds of things. But do you really have a plan? And I don't even need a trading plan. I mean, you've heard, sure, about trading journals and trading plans. Plan your trade. Trade your plan. All those little um, adages and cliches are fine, but you actually have a business plan. Now, I think that most people that are going to be on a webinar like this or spend the amount of time and effort it takes to hone their skills and put in the screen time to be successful traders um, are so focused on the setups, on the screen, on the data, on their approach to the markets, on their strategies, whether they be automated or discretionary, and they've never really sat down and said, okay, my plan is to do this. And I don't mean your plan is to make 20% a year. I don't mean your plan is to just get profitable on one contract or a plan like that. I mean more, is your plan to become a professional trader? And if so, how are you going to get there? There's prop firms, you could raise money, you can get licensed. Today at Collective 2, we're gonna talk about what I think is a really unique way to get to that goal of being a professional trader and getting access to more capital, but in an indirect way, and also a way that will solve the other two C's, the issue with competition, the issue with capital, and give you an actual marketplace, a website that you use to market your trading knowledge and skills the same way you might market a product on Amazon if you're reselling it. So in the first C of competition, I'm gonna to argue today that what, you, what we might wanna talk about doing is competing differently, okay? So I'm not here to talk about trading or how to trade, but one of the things, a mindset that I think that uh, I find missing, especially when I talk to a lot of successful, active futures traders, futures more so than other instruments, and I'll talk a little bit more of that in just a bit, they really want to talk about themselves as a trader and the stats of their strategy and all those types of things. And I never once hear them talk about the portfolio that they're building or being a manager or looking at risk management or any of those types of things. So this is not a slight on the way people are approaching learning and being an active investor, but, uh, or excuse me, trader, but I did want to point out that it's a, it's a bit of a mindset shift that I don't hear very often, especially when people are very focused on the actual strategy or approach to the market. So what I wrote there is orient yourself around a strategy in every sense of the word, strategy to your business, strategy to the market, strategy that's aligned with your particular personality instead of thinking about the setup or the signal or the indicator, those types of things. On Collective 2, you're going to be publishing and sharing your actual trades that then create a strategy. That strategy can be part of your portfolio or anybody else's portfolio. And as we'll talk about in just a minute, all the math, all the performance, none of it matters if you don't think risk first. Because as you go up the risk scale, and I mean as you go up the scale, more money, more problems, which I'll talk about in just a minute, investors are not actually looking for home runs, they're looking for good risk-adjusted returns, which is very different than what most traders are trying to do because they're undercapitalized. They're trying to look for a certain amount of points, certain amount of ticks, certain amount of percentage on a low capital base. So the tip that I wrote down there is if you can't be faster, bigger, and smarter, and you can't, I know some people take offense to smarter, try being more focused, more committed, and more patient. So the original title of this presentation was going to be called Acorns to Oak Trees. So it's important to point out that Collective 2 is not about get rich quick at all. In fact, you have to put in quite a bit of time because there's competition in a very viable marketplace in which there are traders and trading strategies that are well ahead of you if you're not yet publishing. So focus, commitment, and patience is really the way to compete differently. The next thing is capital. So I wrote the, uh, the rap line, more money, more problems. What I also come to find, and this applies to even prop models where it's not even your own money, uh, and maybe some of you have struggled with that friends and family. It's difficult enough to ask strangers for money, let alone your friends and family. It adds all this additional stress 
I find many, many traders are uncomfortable trading outside capital, let alone that in many of those instances you have to get licensed. If that's part of your business plan, great. But what if there was a way to actually have indirect access to outside capital, but just trade your account the exact same size it is now? Sure, in the back of your head, you know that when you hit that button or when your strategy, your automated strategy places a trade, there's replication implications. Say that three times fast, replication implications. People are auto trading, so they're following your strategy and performance is a comp component of how they'll judge you. But I gotta tell you, it's a heck of a lot easier to place a one lot in the S&P and know that that's being replicated across 50 other accounts one time, which we'll talk about, than it is to have to place those 50 yourself because you're trading a commodity pool of maybe $3 million, oh, which you couldn't do unless, of course, you got licensed. So maybe it's not about getting more money after all. Maybe the problem isn't doing the math in your head about if I could only trade a $50,000 or $100,000 account, I would only need two points in the S&P and I could get two points in the S&P. We have all been through that math, especially futures traders. So I'm going to argue today it's really not about getting more money. It's about risk management, portfolio management, patience, building a viable track record, public walk forward, committing to it, and then the capital will come. It'll come in a way that's very unstressful. And then the final is really get into the business. Remember the three C's were <clears throat> competition, capital, and clarity. Okay, I can't tell you how many traders, and I've probably talked to, I used to run some trading and education firms as well since I sold my business in 2010. And it wasn't really my business. I was an early guy at a software company. That's what capitalized my dream life here now where I can wear shorts and spend half the day in my bathroom, right? Living the dream. I'll talk to traders and all they want to do is a deep dive right into their strategies and their sharp ratios and how they approach the market. And it's all kinds of things. But again, I don't want to belabor the point. None of them seem to have a plan. Well, what's your plan? Are you planning to raise capital? Do you want to get licensed? Uh, the plans are usually around just how they grow their own account. So what I would say before you construct a trade plan or change the indicator color or try to figure out how to do this, that or the other in the market, Start with a business plan. And you might have heard that advice before, but I, I would add to it, this business plan is not, I will be at my desk at the market open. I will make sure that I have the phone number of my broker in case I lose my internet connection. I will put in two hours of screen time. That is such nonsense. If people are telling you that's total not, or I will take a shower, I, mean, <laughs> I hear all this stuff, right? Um, it's all crazy. Uh, business plans are written the way you write it the way if you were going to open up a lemonade stand or a dry cleaner or anything else. That's the way your business plan wants to look. And again, I'm going to argue today that Collective 2 at least gives you the marketing arm, the e-commerce component to that business plan. And let's, let's be honest, you're not in business until you sell something, right? So you got to sell something. The final little thing I have there is pay to play keeps you honest, okay? So there is a small fee associated with publishing strategies to Collective 2. We'll get into that as we go through the presentation. And I think that that's really important. So if you're the type of person, there's nothing wrong with this, who looks at you know, $40 or $50 a month to publish trades while you have no subscribers because it takes a little while to build, up, uh, to build up a track record, this might not be something that is will be of interest to you. You could maybe check out right now. I don't want to say get rich quick because it has nothing to do with get rich quick. It has more to do with investing in software infrastructure that will allow you to execute your business plan, which is selling your alpha to the world. Well, that's the business plan I'm proposing to you. And as I wrote in the tip down there, I would say that folks like Amazon are doing pretty well. I mean, e-commerce is ruling the world. This is how, and um, virtual e-commerce, which is what a trade is, you know, selling your alpha, is so easy to deliver. And what are the margins? As far as I know, they're 100%. They're anything you pay collective to, less what you want to charge are your margins. Great business to be in. Okay, so what is collective to? All right, here's my first excuse, which is there's a thing on my screen that's blocking the screen. So let me read it over here. Okay, and I have a phone up to my ear. All right, collective to is an online platform of trading strategies managed by independent market participants. We also sometimes refer to it as peer to peer trading. Uh, the space is sometimes called social trading. I'm not a real fan of that just because I think, um, just truth be told, some, some Forex brokers in Europe have kind of stigmatized social trading where it's all about opening an account with $250 and following some bozo who trades some crazy you know, Forex pair in an unregulated business in Cyprus. So we try to separate ourselves from that. But yes, social trading is a component of it, peer-to-peer -peer trading. We've been called a crowdfunding meets crowdsourcing mashup. Today, I'm on the phone with you folks to 
try to have you uh, come to the platform and check it out if you're a trader because I'm trying to crowdsource. I want to create an expert community of trading strategies. We constantly need to refresh uh, the blood because market conditions do change. Trading strategies come in and out of favor. And as I started the presentation today, say it with me, trading is really, really hard. So let's take a look at it in a little bit more detail. So what C2 does essentially is it lets everyone sell their investing alpha. I'm pretty sure everyone's familiar with the term alpha, so I won't really go into it. Um, but your alpha is, is your trade signals. It's your edge. It's essentially your walk forward out of sample, published, fully public available track record that you put on C2. In a bit, when I get to the software, I'll show you have complete control over that. You don't have to make it public. You can uh, set up test strategies. You can have multiple strategies and only show the ones you want. So, but the ones that are eventually going to become commercial for you, of course, are going to have to stay public and it's all walk forward trading. So whether it's an algo developer in Moscow, probably a guy who's coding for Trump, or on the far right, the amateur stock picker in Miami, they all publish to the same platform and same software. You can also see that there can be registered entities too. So in air quotes, I'm saying professional, whatever that means, you know, professionals, really anyone who earns a living or derives one penny of income from what they're doing, it doesn't even matter what your expenses are. So we have all types of traders from all over the world. I sometimes joke, you know, would you have thought five or 10 years ago that you'd let, your, let some stranger uh, show up in a Prius and take your kids to, uh, to soccer practice? I don't think anyone would have thought that. Would you have thought that you would have let someone stay in your vacation home when you're, not, when you're not there without a broker or someone who's an actual management company? Of course, I'm referring to sort of the sharing economy. That is certainly taking hold in the world of investing. This has been tried for about 10 to 15 years. And again, without sounding like a broken record, that it's a lot easier to to drive a car, of course, than it is to trade profitably because pro trading is very, very hard. But each one of these people that is producing alpha, yes, it's a marketplace. You can see the other trading strategies, but they're taking a slow and steady business-like approach to their trading and they're treating it like a business. And the beautiful thing is what you see below there. There's a marketplace of 115,000 users, over $75 million of the capital currently and growing pretty quickly. C2 members who are investors, speculators, or even other traders. So I originally came to Collective 2 when I began doing friends and family uh, work for my, it was never officially a, a CPO or CTA because I didn't want to get registered at the time and, and require the amount of, uh, I was just at the amount of money you're allowed to do before that. And I thought there has to be a better way to do this. And that's how I ended up actually finding C2. And while I never officially used it to manage that structure, what I did do is go, wow, there's a lot of traders on here that are way better than I am. Why am I even messing around with trying to produce the alpha? I'll just go raise the funds and, and put them in these types of uh, trading strategies. So the demand side is varied. And of course, the supply side is very varied. And we're hoping that you folks, some of you, come on over and give it a try uh, when we're done here. Okay. So anyone with a trading strategy or opinion can distribute uh, that across C2 and earn money. That's the simple value proposition here. The reason I put opinion in there is because in the teaser for this webinar, there was some discussion about automated versus discretionary trading, and maybe uh, it was sold as a deeper dive that I'm actually going to go into. Um, at the end of the presentation, I welcome anyone to send me an email, Rod at Collective2. Uh, we can Skype, we can do whatever, because I love talking about that. It's one of my favorite you know, uh, discussions is really discretionary versus automated, and of course, uh, active versus passive, right? So we could talk that all day long. But it's important to point out, you don't have to be an automated trader with a full, fully coded up thing to work on C2. You can have any type of strategy and the IP remains your own. Here's what we do. C2 will verify your, your results and track records. We'll talk about how that works when we get to the demo. We're gonna send your trades to the brokerage accounts. We, we now support about 15, 15 or 16 brokers. In fact, we have the, the broadest broker representation in the futures markets. So just about, all the major futures brokers, whether it's Ninja Broker or, or AMP or, or Dorman who clears for a lot of people, or of course you could clear futures at IB. Uh, we're starting a relationship with Infinity Transact. We have ADM, we have, we have them all, pretty much all of them, okay? So that means your investors have the opportunity to open an account at a variety of different firms and follow your trades. And then we'll talk about how you actually get your signals to Collective2 in just a bit. So your strivers can, uh, can control, follow, modify their positions. This is completely self-directed trading. When you're a trade leader on C2, you're not in the business of providing advice. You're not in the business of, 
of soliciting, actively soliciting and telling people that you're the greatest person in the world, there, there are some, um, some constraints that you have to be aware of when you're publishing on Collective 2. But you are in the business of being in e-commerce, right? But the reason that you can do this without going and getting licensed or be, making sure that you're completely compliant is that you are essentially publishing trade signals the same way an automated newsletter would. The investors in that have complete control over their account. You're not taking their money. They can turn off and turn on the strategy at any time. They could add to the position. They could add their own stop loss. They could do whatever they want. So yeah, that puts a little bit more pressure on the trader to, to make sure that you're aware that it's very easy for them to cut the cord. But um, the self-directed aspect is a key component to why the, pl the platform and the marketplace works the way it does in a compliantary regula regulatory way. Is Rod talking fast enough? I think he is. And then, as I mentioned before, you want to get in business. One way you could get in business is to use SaaS software or a platform like Collective2 where we're going to manage the monthly subscription fee, the billing, give you a really pretty website and track record that you can promote, uh, give you social sharing capabilities, give you all the statistics that you could ever want. And by the way, you have all those stats without having to export them, import them, write any qualitative thing in your journal. You're welcome to do that. But you have, you're, you're creating stats that are at a level that an institutional money manager allocator would want to see, way beyond Sharp and Sartino. Really, really deep. We'll take a look at some of the stats as we go through it. So at a high level, Collective 2, we have about 115,000 users that in their uh, over 40 countries comprised of thousands of trading strategies, and those are paying trading strategies, meaning that they're publishing to the system. Since the inception of C2, we've had about 57 close to 58,000 trading strategies that have submitted signals to the platform. As I mentioned, there's $75 million connected to the platform. So that's the, the net equity value of all of the accounts that are following strategies on Collective2. Those are dedicated accounts. Uh, you have to commit to connecting to the Collective2 interface and you can't trade uh, other things. You can add to positions as an investor. You can, again, turn it off and on, but that's dedicated money. So any money that's sitting in those accounts is hungry for alpha and looking for opportunities. And I have a little tip over there. This, I'll get into this in just a moment in terms of the tips for success, in terms of the types of strategies and instruments that seem to work well, is that we have 40 countries, we have uh, hundreds of thousands of users, and they're all over the world, and yet a vast majority, even foreign traders, uh, European traders, are trading U.S. markets a lot because it's the biggest market, and I get it. But I don't want to discourage anybody, if you're an S&P futures trader, you can get in there and throw your hat in the ring and probably do pretty well if you have a successful strategy that produces edge and alpha. That being said, the world does not need another S&P trading strategy. It just doesn't. So the world does need more people to trade the Dow Jones, you know, the Euro stocks 50, which, by the way, is more liquid than any other contract except for the ZN and the ES. In fact, today, it's getting way more liquid. So it's one of the most liquid contracts if you don't go to interest rates. Okay, so I'm going to show you a strategy today that has um, clearly it's done well. That's why it's attracted so, so much capital, but uh, I should say subscribers. But really the key to its success, I believe, is that it's trading the, um, the Euro stocks 50. And nine out of every 10 future strategies in stock indices are trading the S&P. So look at the flags and maybe consider that uh, if there's an unmet need, fill it. Okay, you can go to collective2.com and you can find out we have about 20 quotes up there right now from our trade leaders. We try to refresh that as often as possible. Uh, here are just a few. Uh, you know, auto trade technology works brilliantly. I love C2's large community of users. And then finally, John Netto, who I'll talk about in just a, a little while. Uh, give him one more pitch. Um, super bright guy. You can go to proteantrader.com to learn more about it. I'll actually be speaking with him at the Traders Expo in Las Vegas this fall as well, if you're heading out to that. So he used uh, Collective2 specifically as an out-of-sample third-party validation method. So um, I've been very focused on the business opportunity. The title of the, stra of the presentation today is How to Earn More Money from Your Trading. But there are certain instances in which for 39 bucks a month, you can have this validated third-party out-of-sample walk-forward track record that you can choose to do whatever you want with, market it in completely other ways. We give you full access to your data, full access to um, the JSON, which is a fancy way of an HTML, which is a fancy way of saying you can you can promote what you're doing outside of the platform issue if you wish to do do that. Um, so we'll talk more about Netto and the Netto number as a as a risk management uh, uh, initiative. 
And again, if you'd like to find out more about uh, the, the obligatory testimonials, you can go to Collective 2. All right, now let's dive into how you manage a strategy on Collective 2. So again, this is focused on you, the trade leaders. Trade leaders is the term for the, the, uh, the supply side, the traders on the platform. By the way, if you happen to be an investor and invest in the futures markets or, or invest in general, I don't want you to feel like this material is, is not necessarily uh, appropriate. It's just, it's, like, it's just slanted differently. So uh, when we get to the demo, I would encourage everybody to, um, to consider looking at the strategies, not only from a standpoint of, wow, that's my competition if I'm looking to get into this marketplace, but, oh, wow, maybe I can get ideas from that. Or if you're in a position, potentially you could run it in a simulated paper account, which we allow you to do for as long as you'd like. Um, you don't get real-time access to the signals, but you can build a portfolio and you can follow them in a simulated environment uh, with a $100,000 portfolio. Okay, so you're a trade leader. How do you get your strategies to Collective 2? Okay, there's six different ways. I'm not going to go through them all in a lot of detail. But one of the things that we really pride ourselves on is while many brokers will try to support one, two, or three platforms, something like that, they're generally not going to expose their API. They're not going to have their own trading language. They generally, a lot of, most futures brokers don't own their own platforms except for guys like, you know, closed systems now like TradeStation or uh, Interactive Brokers or, of course, the, the Behemoth, which is Ninja Trader in their own brokerage. So the first thing you can do is you can just use our C2 Quick Trade. It's just a quick order entry. You go to the website, pop in your trade, no problem. If you're a support resistance trader, if you don't trade that act actively, it just gets the job done. I mean, I trade on our Quick Trade quite, quite often. The next is broker transmit. So broker transmit is where you actually use your live brokerage account. This is not required. We'll talk about the difference between SIM and paper and live in just a moment. But if you happen to have an account at Ninja Broker, any broker, uh, let me just talk the futures world for right now. If you work with any broker that uh, has a CQG arrhythmic connection, you're all set. You can use any platform, doesn't matter. You can use broker transmit to send signals to us directly at the data level using the platform of your choice. Uh, let's move over to platform transmit. Now, what if you don't have a live account? You're still paper trading, still doing, doing that, or for whatever reason, you have some combination of accounts that we don't support uh, through broker transmit. You can use platform transmit. So if you use NinjaTrader, use MultiCharts, use TradeStation, use MT4, you can set it up as a connector and indicator. Yes, it's one more hop. It's not as sexy as submitting a signal directly from the data feed in the broker for the broker, but it works. It works really well. We've made a lot of changes and enhancements to it. If you've been following Collective 2 for a while or you knew us in the past, this was a major pain point because it's not that easy to, uh, to have indicators or connectors that, you know, in real time, especially with people that are trading very actively, which we don't encourage. I'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, the connections had some latency issues and things. We've made uh, huge strides and improvements in that. If you've been trying it in the past, I'd really highly recommend you come back to Collective 2 and give it a try if you use something like Ninja or TradeStation. If you're uh, a little bit more right brain, we got developer APIs. This is similar to like quantitative finance platform. We have our own language called C2, which is based on Ami Broker. And you can even send us a good old email. And believe it or not, we got a lot of trade leaders that send us emails. If you are, uh, if you, are uh, you know, most of us uh, here on this call probably have full-time jobs aside from the screen time. Hey, just shoot an email in the right format before you leave for work. You know, buy this, stop, target, boom and you're, you're set. So we support all those various methods. And if there's any questions on that, I can go into it um, in a little bit. I see a question about why back testing is not good. Yeah, I'll, I'll go into it. Okay, let me tell you a little bit about successful traits for what, what we've seen, again, in looking at thousands and tens of thousands of uh, strategies. And by the way, this is not a reflection of saying that a crude oil trading system that has an eight tick target and an eight tick stop and trades 40 times a day and makes money is not a good strategy. What I'm saying is that's not a good strategy for building a hundred subscriber base on a platform like Collective 2 for a variety of reasons, which I'll just go into. So these are the types of things that work specifically on our platform, but I think they have application to trading, money management, risk management, portfolio management in general. So the first is simplicity. Can you describe to me not even an elevator. You don't even get two floors of the elevator or five floors in the elevator. You got to tell me in 10 words or less what your strategy does. Support and resistance on uh, uh, bond futures. Uh, trend, trend following S&P. Mean, mean reversion, crude mean reversion uh, trades uh, around inventory. There you go. 
has to be really, really simple to describe. Again, not because you're in the, the huge marketing business or you're, again, you're gonna be having direct conversations with investors and you have to sort of sell, but it's just, it's, a, it's, a, it's an easy thing to fall back on in the description that you put in, um, in, uh, in your description on the platform. And everything is all about simplicity when it comes to uh, you know, getting your point across as to what your strategy actually does. Statistics that show positive expectancy, this is pretty simple. And I mean beyond Sharp or Certino. So uh, I'm a huge believer that most traders don't spend enough time in the math. I also happen to be a poker player. There's a lot of traders that are poker players. And there's some nuance between how much math versus how much you know, feel and all those kinds of things. There's none of that nuance in trading, zero. You cannot, there is no feel in trading. Uh, this might this might be as controversial as why I think backtesting is totally nonsense, but let's start with this, which is if you publish about 100 strat signals to Collective 2 or stay active for three to four months, you will have so many statistics that will be staring you right in the face. And many, many times it only takes me 30 seconds or any of our other allocators or people that are working with us. We have quant analysts and others that can just look and say this strategy does not have long term positive positive expectancy even with a sharp ratio of 1.5, even though it doesn't martingale, even though it doesn't um, necessarily exhibit traits that show that much volatility, it could have an inverse uh, risk reward ratio and a win rate ratio of less than 50%. That will never succeed long-term. That won't even succeed short-term for very long. So again, that's pr this is probably pretty obvious. Well, hey, yeah, Rod, of course, if, if it was easy as you know, generating five or 10% quarterly returns with drawdowns that don't exceed half that, you know, everyone would do it. I'm not, I'm not saying this is easy to show statistics with positive expectancy, but um, what I am saying is get to know the math. And if you're seeing that your math is not going to add up over the long term, you're going to, you might find that you don't, uh, you don't have the type of uh, receptivity to your strategy that you would like. The next is very simple. Less is more lower trade frequency. High transaction costs are killer killers. And I can say this with 100% certainty. And I've had you know, battles with probably 50 traders, uh, including some very successful prop traders at some well-known firms, um, you know, that show me their W-2s and show me what they're making. And then I look at how they trade. Uh, it's usually the oil markets and things. Scalping will not work on the platform. It just does not work. So I'll just leave it at that. Less is more. We'll take a look at a few strategies in a moment. Some of the better ones trade once or twice a week. Now, I fully understand that for many active futures traders or people that are trying to quote unquote trade for a living, um, there's generally a lot more frequency and I get that. So this might be a little bit of a change. Maybe you set up something different that you might want to try experimenting with on a platform like Collective 2. But I can assure you that if you come in and put up 50 trades a week, 100 trades a week, some of you might do 50 trades in a day, just nearly impossible to be successful uh, on a platform like Collective 2. The next is you got to trade instruments with um, liquid instruments with tight spreads. I won't spend too much time in this. Most futures contracts uh, qualify for this. Sometimes things like gold and some of the softs and grains do not. Um, I mentioned before a, a huge unmet need. The ZN contract is one of the most li liquid contracts. That's the 10 year bond futures contract. I see almost zero retail trading in that. And I refer to most trade leaders on our platform as retail, whether they happen to you know, be a CTA or not. So there's a huge need for that. You can't ask for something that has better spreads and better liquidity. If you had 100 subscribers, even 1,000 subscribers, you could get filled uh, on a one lot across 1,000 different accounts in real time, probably on the bid or offer, mostly all day long. So another little thing there, if you're an options trader, but by the way, um, Terry, does it make sense to drop that, that survey real quick to make sure that I'm not just talking past everybody focusing on futures so much. Absolutely. Maybe to find out if they're... Which there one are you some... want me to drop? I just would like to know if... if uh, the one about futures, do you trade just futures or do you trade other things as well, like options and stocks? Or I don't, I don't know if we set it up as a yes, no answer. I did it as a yes, no. But... Okay, here we go. This is also a good way of telling this. Anyone can follow along with my, my speed talk. Terry, are you going to do the uh, Jeopardy music? No. <laughs> no you're supposed to, oh, you know. <laughs> right. I'll get uh, about another 30 to 40 seconds. Okay, good. We're already up to 70% voted, so that's a good sign.
that's I love that. I think that's enough time. They're either they're either awake or checked out or and close. And what do we got? It is see we can, there we go. All right, so it's pretty it's pretty evenly spread, right? So about 50% just trade uh so if it, the answer is yes, you trade futures only, about half the audience just trades futures and the rest trade um probably futures and other instruments as well, right? Yes, so I'm really, really I'm, I'm actually surprised by that because you know, we are futures.io, so it is surprising right. to see that half the audience is not trading futures, so that's definitely interesting. Right. Um, or that just means maybe they're trading an instrument in addition to futures. That's Possibly, I would yeah. Kinda, yeah. yeah, that's the way I'd kind of read it. Um, so let me just cover that really quickly. So uh, we'll continue to, f uh, to focus it more on futures. I mean, your mileage may vary if you're an investor or a trader who trades a different instrument class because they're, a lot of what I put here is, um, re reply, uh, is applied to futures, which what I've seen uh, futures traders tend to be a little bit more active than maybe a uh, stock trader. Um, so along along those lines, um, well, I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, if you only if you only trade futures, uh, the great thing about Collective Two is we support all four major instrument classes. So your portfolio is not limited, or your strategy on Collective Two is not limited to particular asset class. You're welcome to do that. There's some questions sometimes about whether if you have a strategy that trades uh, the S and P futures contract and then also trades spy options as a hedge or or as uh, additional. Uh, momentum or whatever you do, you trade a, a different instrument class. Does that confuse investors or is it better to be focused? And the, the answer is no, not at all. Um, the vast majority of the accounts are currently with interactive brokers where you can actually trade any instrument class you want except for Forex and not for US citizens. So if you happen to be familiar with other instruments or were looking for ways in which you could um, you could hedge or enhance uh, trading strategies that you're you're playing with. Collective Two is a is a great great way to uh, to toy with that kind of stuff. Um, and then finally, I already mentioned this: the kind of idea of trading alternatives. So some of the most popular strategies uh, on Collective Two are ones that actually successfully trade things that are grim death to investors very often, like these VIX products. Uh, you know. I generally would not recommend that anybody who doesn't have a sound approach and a strategy is messing around with XIV, Vixen, UVXY, all these things. And however, VIX strategies are very, very popular on Collective 2, including VIX futures strategies, which is sort of a newer component. VIX futures has been around for a while, but we're seeing more trading of the VIX futures as well. So to stand out from the crowd, to compete in a marketplace, and again, I don't want to discourage you from from starting out with what you're comfortable with if you use the NASDAQ or S&P or anything like that. But uh, looking at some of the alternative types of products um, is, a, is, a, is a good approach to consider and we see a lot of successful strategies doing that. Okay, now I just really wanted to just talk just briefly about prop math. I haven't talked a lot about prop trading versus what we're talking about, but I'm assuming that if you're part of Futures IO, you're aware of Top Step Trader, you're aware of some of the other prop firms out there for futures, and there's nothing wrong with it. In fact, we're probably at some point in the future might even have a partnership with, with Top Step Trader in some form or fashion. Keep in mind, if you're trading a Top Step Trader, uh, either like they call it their combine or with a live account, if you've passed, you are using most likely Ninja Trader and they use a rhythmic connection. So you can connect your, even your combine directly to a trading strategy on Collective 2 as well. So if that's something that uh, anyone's interested in, I'm not going to go into it in a lot more detail. You can just hit me at Rod at Collective 2 if you want to find out more about C2 and Top Step working in concert. So let me just go through the math real quick. And there's nothing wrong with prop firms at all. And just as there's nothing wrong with back testing, which I'll talk about. But let, let's say that you had the $50,000 account. And by the way, that's not really an account. They're just giving you $50,000 worth of buying power based on their own parameters. Um, you have no parameters on Collective 2. Uh, there are certain behaviors and techniques and strategies that work better than others, like I mentioned, but we're not telling you you can't do this or you can't do that or you have to be flat at this time or you have to do that. There's no constraints. But if you're working with a prop firm, there's a lot of constraints. $50,000 account that generates 100% return, so you double the count in the course of a year. Is that possible? Sure, it's possible. You can triple an account in the, in the course of a year using levered instruments like futures. I'll tell you, it's stressful, okay? You're going to get an 80% payout for top step, which is a great payout, by the way. That's going to yield you $40,000. That's fine. 
part-time, if you're doing it part-time, that's a nice additional income. Of course, you have to qualify for the $50,000 account and you have to generate 100% return. Now, what if you had a $10,000 account on model portfolio on Collective 2, which by the way, could be a simulator paper account, doesn't even have to be live, okay? You need to treat it like it's live. You're gonna pay us $39 a month to publish it. So there's some, there's some uh, skin in the game for you. Don't, don't go in there and act like a drunken monkey with a wiffle ball bat. $100,000 account generates a 25% return annually, not quarterly, not daily, annually, right? With 100 subscribers at $50 a month times our payout, which is 70%, is $42,000, okay? Now, is it easy to get a 25% return on $10,000? No, nothing's easy. You might have heard, you know, it's a hard way to make an easy living or easy way to make a hard living or whatever the cliche is for trading. I, I certainly think it's less stressful and it's certainly possible with futures to earn a 25% return. We can talk more about drawdowns and things like that. Now, how hard is it to get 100 subs? That's not easy. Not easy. That's, that's well above the average amount of subs for strategies on Collective 2. I'm going to be completely transparent here. We are a marketplace that operates like mo most other marketplaces, where a vast majority of the success and income goes to a smaller percentage of the community. That's just how the world unfortunately works. In fact, at every level of our economy and, and world, worldwide, this is a disparity, disparity that is just unfortunate, um, but in a capitalist kind of structure, this is how things work. I could say that you know, these strategies are better, they work harder, there's a number of factors that lead to their success. But it is possible certainly to get 100 subs. And I would say that that 25% return, if it came with very minimal drawdowns and a nice steady eddy kind of uh, uh, um, equity curve, it's very, very reasonable to get 100 subs. And by the way, that $50, you set that price. It could be 25, it could be 100. If you, if you have 100 subs at 100, what's just happened? You just doubled your income, okay? Again, I like Tops of Trader. We might have a relationship with them. Try calling Tops of Trader and asking how they can double your income, give you more buying power, increase your payout rate to 99%. It's just not gonna happen, right? So this is a little bit about the, the difference between prop, a prop trading model, which some, some of you might already even be on, and what you could potentially do on Collective 2. All right. Let me get to a demo. Before that, I will, you know what, I'm gonna, I've, I've teased like three times that I'm gonna answer the back testing question. I will answer it uh, uh, as soon as we get to the Q&A. Okay, so let's come over to collective2.com. So this is our website, corporate website, collective2.com. There's a lot of stuff you can learn about here. Uh, it's important to point out that throughout the website as well as inside the application, there's a lot of very important information about how we calculate results, hypothetical data, technical details. I had had some questions on the AMA, which is the Ask Me Anything on Futures IO, which I also recommend uh, you check out if you want to just ask me a question directly on the forum. Um, but if you have any questions about things like how we calculate results and, and all the technical data associated with performance, you can go right to collective2.com and get all those. So. Um, I probably won't go into those too much uh, in any sort of question. So this is our website, corporate website. You can check it out, uh, look at it. One thing I highly recommend, it's not very prominent. There's a little search bar up here. And if you type in like whatever, Ninja Trader, it's gonna take you to become a trade leader using Ninja 8, Collective 2 ad support for claim multi-broker platform IQ broker, which um, actually I should talk a little bit about that when we get to the Q&A. So anyway, that's how I use our website, corporate website, highly recommend it. Um, if at the end of this, why don't we just do the drop close right now? Uh, the join C2 button will allow you to sign up for a free 14 day trial for Collective 2 if you're a trade leader, you can do that right at collective2.com. So let's jump inside the application, take a quick look. I'm now logged in sort of as a super administrator. Um, this demo is meant to be very high level and very quick. But what you're looking at here is the leaderboard. And I've actually done a search here that looks for trades own strategy that also that just trades futures. And these are the these are what has come back. So you can see some some impressive numbers. What I would like to point out is rather than sorting by performance, I like to sort by this sometimes, which is show me the worst drawdown. And a heart attack index is a proprietary thing that that we use. It's very sophisticated. It's the probability that you as an investor, if you're following the strategy, will have a heart attack. Um, I joke, but it's our attempt to try to point out that you know what goes up can go down, and instead of just looking for the chart that goes from the bottom left to the upper right, also consider situations like drawdown. You can drill into any of these strategies, look at them in more detail. Why don't we just take a look at this? Why don't we do this? Um, let me go to the middle of the pack. This guy looks good. 
I honestly didn't look at this beforehand, swear to you. I don't even know the strategy at all. So uh, there you go, it only has five months of, of trade history. So it has five months of trade history. Let's see if it actually has any live subscribers. So we don't um, publish the actual number of live subscribers for a variety of different reasons. Um, there's a lot of reasons we don't do that. We do show you latest activity, so some the recent subscribers. But if you wanted to get a ballpark figure, maybe of how many people are actually following a strategy live, you would click on uh, click on the strategy, come to show auto trade data. And this does have live subscribers because anytime you see this little uh, orange icon here, that's going to indicate that there are live subscribers. I'm going to click on it there. And in this case, there's just two right now. So again, only four or five months of trading track record. All right. But you can see that this strategy traded. So this, this is a good example too, because th this looks like it trades some equities and some futures as well, although it's listed as a trade zone strategy for futures. So you can see it bought 867 at, and this is what's also nice. This is in two different accounts. The exact same quantity got filled at the uh, exact same price at two different interactive brokers accounts. Okay, so that's a little bit about how that works. Now let me go to the statistics. I mentioned before, we're gonna give you enough statistics to choke a horse. So tell me when you want me to stop scrolling, okay? So the bottom line is, uh, I have never seen it's equal for, for a platform. I've never seen it in a trading journal, I've never seen it in an Excel spreadsheet with every macro and uh, formula known to man. I've never seen it in a brokerage statement. I've never seen it in a third party. So included with everything you get in Collective 2, is the most detailed statistics that you would ever see. And again, this is anything a quant, a hedge fund, allocator, anybody, let alone, of course, it's for your own internal use too, is to understand all of your statistics here. Here's your description and then back to the trading track record, okay? On the left-hand side, uh, the navigation is broken up into investor and trade leader. Let me switch over to being a trade leader because I was looking at the site as an investor. Again, we support both marketplaces. And since we're talking about the trade leader opportunity, let me come over here to trade leader tools. And remember when I mentioned there's all these different methods of selecting a, uh, a means of submitting signals to Collective 2. Let me just click on platform transmit and I'll come over to manage my platform transmit accounts. And I already have one set up that I'm using NinjaTrader for testing. Everything I do is, is for testing purposes. Um, Set up your trading platforms. It looks like none of your strategies qualify. Okay, the reason none of these qualify is because this one has open positions, this one has broker transmit, and this one has platform transmit. So that always happens when you're doing a demo. I'm going to risk it, and what I'm going to do is come over to a demo user, and this demo user has no strategy, so that's a bummer. How about this one? Here we go. And let me go over to on this moment. Bum, ba -dum. Okay, let's see if let's see if I can do it with this this guy. All right, let's see, get started. It looks like one looks like none of the stress. <laughs> okay. When you do a demo rod, what you really want to do is find a user and find a scenario where you could go through it. All right, if we had strategies that qualified for using Platform Transmit, you would see the logos here, and I just wanted to walk you through the way that works. But just imagine in your mind's eye that you have the ability to just click on NinjaTrader or Multicharts or MT4 or a variety of other methods, including IQ Broker, which is um, uh, an amazing broker-neutral platform, uh, one of the most powerful ones I've ever come across. Uh, you can go to iqbroker.com. I know that probably if you're most traders and, and parts of this community are pretty committed to the platform they're using and it's not easy to learn a new platform, but especially if you're algorithmic or if you're a developer or if you have an intention of hiring someone to add some logic and code up your strategies, I'd highly recommend you go over to iqbroker.com, which has now become our preferred trading platform for uh, for Collective, Collective 2. Okay, so now let me go to just one strategy that I know I want to go to, which is called simplicity trading. I'm just going to do a lookup, simplicity trading, because this has started to show up on my dashboard. Okay, so um, what can I tell you about it? All right, well, obviously the stats are pretty phenomenal. I mean, very phenomenal, right? But what, it, what, what about it is, is, is really gra grabbing my attention? Well, since November of last year, the strategy has only placed 27 trades. Now, you might go, whoa, 
I'm not even in business if I place 27 trades or I'll place 27 trades in a day. So, but look, but as you can see, it hasn't had, every month it's been profitable. The, the profit factor is off the charts. And again, this is a factor of the fact that it hasn't traded very much and a cumulative return of 187 with a drawdown of 11%. Let me point out again, all performance results that I'm talking about, as you can see here, are hypothetical. If you go to the top of the page, you really need to understand what um, the nature of hypothetical performance. And you might say, well, what does that mean when you're telling me that this, you know, this, these, this is a great strategy? It must have some subscribers that are trading live capital, and it does. We'll look in just a moment. But again, no two track records are going to be exactly the same, um, so your mileage may vary a little bit. Uh, but what you are looking on here is the results of the trades tracked in real time, walk forward, with a hundred dollar subscription fee taken out and applicable commissions for, I think, interactive brokers or typical brokers commission. So this is the actual return that someone following the strategy would have received, okay? By the way, you can click on just about anything and get more information on historical drawdown and all those types of things you might wanna look at. All right, let's do the same thing we did before. We'll go to show auto trade data. We're gonna come in here and look at the last trade. Now, I teased this a little bit because remember, we, we showed the flags and we said, hey, you should probably try to trade the Dow Jones Euro Stocks 50. Now, this is one of the only guys that trades the Dow Jones Euro Stocks 50. And, what, and of course, it helps that the strategy is doing well, don't get me wrong. Um, you could trade anything if you trade it poorly, it doesn't matter if it's a you know, highly sought after diversified instrument. But in this case, he, this trade leaders is really not comp competing against any other S&P strategies or whatever. It looks like they do trade a little bit of the S&P. All right, I'm getting long-winded here. Let me open this up. Now, this is a whole nother can of worms in a good way. So as far as I know, no other trading platform on the planet is going to show you this. The actual broker, the actual time, the fill, these are all individual fills done in individual brokerage accounts. And if you had questions about liquidity and, and slippage and all those things, we can go into them in the, uh, in the Q&A. And as I've mentioned before, not all trading strategies are appropriate for this model. But if we just do the I test here, 10, 2, 1, 35, there's a 35 lot, okay? 300, uh, 3, 4, 4, 4, 5. Let's keep going until we get a single fill that is different. None. So all these contracts were filled in individual self-directed investors accounts. Now you can see that happened, many of them happened to be at IB. But even the ones at Trade of 8, CQG, and Gain Futures were all filled at the exact same price. Okay, now you might wonder why is it different amounts? Well, because every account is completely self-directed. So here's what's cool. The trade leader, the strategy, submitted a signal to buy seven, okay? These accounts are following at 100%. They're buying seven. This one only bought one. They, maybe they don't have enough money, they don't have as much money, or they wanna be a little bit more conservative, or they don't know this contract, or whatever the situation may be. I can assure you this is not advice that this trade leader is telling these people what to do. You can't do that anyway. We don't encourage it at all, and it's not permitted. These people are completely self-directed. They're looking at the stats. They're understanding their own risk parameters and how the platform works, and they are scaling appropriately the amount of contracts they, they want to trade. There are maxes in terms of how much they can scale, okay? But this scaling is probably around 500% because that traded, you know, 35 contracts when the strategy just traded seven. All right. I love this thing. I've been the product manager of it for about 12 months, so, uh, and I've been using it for five years, four and a half years. So I could start getting crazy and spend a ton, ton of time in here. But just suffice to say, either as an investor or a trade leader, you can come into Collective2, sign up for a free account. It uh, never costs you anything to do anything on the platform until you actually want to publish your signals uh, as a trade leader or until you want to actually subscribe live and, uh, and auto trade. Other than that, the account is completely free. You can get access to all the data that you're seeing here. You can even export this data. You can do your own analysis. Really, just lots of... You can get lost in here, lots of fun. All right, I'm gonna shut up now, and I think I wanted to go back to my circle of success. Let me go to, oops. Let me see if I can go into presentation, yeah, okay. All right, so here's the last sort of uh, little, gimmick, little gimmicky uh, slide that I put together, which is the circle of C2. Uh, I can start anywhere on this, on this uh, circle here. I'm just gonna stay, start up at the top, which is, uh, you've probably heard this many, many times if you've been consumers of this type of material or if you're passionate about the markets and trying to, again, hone your trading uh, skills 
and uh, and really have a go at it in this very tough competitive uh, market. You got to stay at it. You got to persevere. And one of the things I love about Collective Two and prop firms and other things that are allowing you to you know pay a little bit of money to really try to build a track record is that it really helps you stay at it and persevere. If you blow up your actual account, you run out of money, you're out of business, right? So staying at it and persevering is very, very helpful. Business plan, we talked about systems and methodology. Um, you, you have to have some sort of approach, right? I'm, this is not the talk today to, to get into all of that. Of course, it's not willy-nilly. And, and systems and methodology is not about whether it's fully automated or you're discretionary. It's, it's really about just what it says. It's about having having an actual system that you know produces edge and alpha and having a methodology associated with that. Test, measure, analyze, and repeat. All right, now let me get into the question around backtesting. Okay, there is nothing wrong with backtesting. Okay, maybe that was written a little strongly. I, I, I wrote it, so you know I like to be controversial and, and tease things. In fact, IQ Broker, which is the platform that I talked about, is one of the most powerful backtesting tools I have ever seen, okay? This is probably a conversation that's more than it's a conversation I really can't go into today. There is value, of course, to running simulated back tests to understand. You can do those manually. You can do them fully automated to to sort of weed out and get you uh, the right ideas and things. But if you go to Collective Two, you can download a white paper called uh, the the strategy. Ninety nine percent of trading strategies are total scams or something like that. And it's really just that testing and back testing will lead you to so many different rat holes and, and uh, false senses of promise um, that just, that just are, look, run some back tests, but don't spend too much time there. And then when you, you think you have a candidate that's good, you just got to go for it and start publishing those, those trades in a walk forward manner. Because then the, the first thing you might see is, wow, how come 30 days out of the gate, I'm seeing results that are different than all these back tests that I've done before. The point, the point being is that the, the real key to um, making money in any way, shape, or form in trading is you have to have money in the market. Or in the case of Collective 2, you have to be publishing uh, a, a track record that others could potentially invest in via a subscription. Okay, So yes, test, measure, analyze, and repeat, but don't spend too much time in your testing environment before you actually take action, which is the next thing. Find community and support. Um, Collective 2, we call it a community. Uh, I'm not going to say that it's sort of like a trade room or uh, you know, uh, where we all get together in Vegas and, and, and hang out. But I, I got to tell you that I have met some of the most intelligent, committed, passionate type of traders who are not the ones that are out there selling their wares or, uh, you know, running webinars <laughs> like this one. They're just, they're introverted, they're intelligent, they're passionate, and they're really, they're really cool to talk markets. And even though you might think that this is a competitive environment because your trading strategy is sitting right next to the, to the next one, You'll find that on the forums and everywhere else, there is um, there's a lot of interaction and community. And here's what's also cool is that you can look up their username and see if they're publishing strategies and see what they're doing. Right. I mean, it's, you know, those that can't do teach a little bit. You may have heard of that before. So I like the fact that this is validated in every sense of the word. I'm not saying that if someone is running a strategy that's not profitable, they're a bad person or that there's anything else wrong with them in any other kind of way. But it's certainly going to shed light on my opinion of what they might want to, what they might be talking about within a thread. Understanding risk, I talked about that at the beginning. Accurately and honestly evaluating yourself, this is the idea of, you know, having a track record and committing to it. And then finally, you want to try to be as flexible as possible. Okay, how you get started, I already talked about this. You sign up to be a trade leader. There's a free 14-day trial. After that, you just start submitting signals. You know, as I mentioned, short of actual smoke signals, we can capture trades in a lot of ways. Then you want to trade well. If you trade well, Mar the marketplace usually rewards that, and you can begin to attract subscribers. All right, I'll now open it up for questions. Terry, what do we got? All right, let's see. All right, let's get to the back testing question because there's quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. So, why do you believe that back testing is not worth it? Um, I just think it's too it's too emphasized. I, I, well, I, I touch base on this. So um, it's a fine, it's a fine practice. I'm a much bigger fan of automated backtesting through really automated scripts than I am sort of this manual backtesting stuff that I see where people, you know, scroll across the chart and say, oh, well, that might or might not have taken that signal, or maybe I would have because, you know, this condition or that, or, and you can never really be honest. I mean, the, so the first thing, the only way to really backtest is it has to be a fully scripted automated backtest. Um, 
there's a lot of places you can do that. A lot of vendors you can do it with. A lot of free quantitative finance platforms you can do that with. So if you're focused a little bit more on, on completely scripted automated backtesting, then um, I'll say that that puts you worlds away, worlds ahead in terms of accuracy and honesty, as well as just the amount of data that you can consume versus this sort of manual backtesting thing that I've seen people do on charts and stuff. So, so start there. And then as you begin to get, well, again, this just sort of gets into strategy development and stuff that um, I'm not sure we're going to go into today. But again, check it out on IQ Broker. And if you like the back test that you're seeing from, from what you have, go ahead and publish one of those strategies as soon as you can to make sure that it operates the same in a real world walk forward environment that it did in your back test. Uh, one last thing that comes to mind, there's all kinds of bar types and, and things that are more difficult to back test. It's really hard to estimate commissions and slippage. I know that there's a lot of tools that say they can do that. IQ Broker is the best at it by far, I assure you. Um, so those are the various reasons that uh, that I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't spend too much time on it, um, and it's a practice that is that can be fraught with a lot of errors. Okay, uh, are option only strategies supported in C2? Absolutely, you can trade in any instrument class you want. We don't currently support options and futures, and we also don't support um, spread based exchange uh, um, exchange based spreads but everything else is fine. With options, you do have to consider liquidity a little bit more. You have to, you know, you could get filled on the directional trade on Bank of America, op weekly options all day long. But um, if you're trying to do an iron condor, uh, keep in mind that, you know, where you're looking to is to have 50, 100, 200 subscribers and there ain't a market maker in the world that's gonna give you good fills on market orders on iron condors, you know, 200 times, whatever you're trading. So, um, I think most most options traders would get that. Okay. Uh, is there a place on the website where you can post videos, instructions to the trader to explain the strategy and trading goal? So we don't have um, we don't have videos quite yet. So we we have uh, if you come over to uh, there's a description and let me click on the description. So this is a um, area where you as the trade leader can describe whatever you'd like. Uh, we do not permit you to, to post images in here. Um, selectively, you can provide links to external sources. Um, once you link to an external source, of course, it has nothing to do with, uh, with Collective 2. Uh, and then we also have a private plan, which is for, uh, so what we have is when, when people get pretty successful on the platform, sometimes they want to actually market their strategies on their own website entirely outside of Collective 2. You can clone them over and do that. And if you control your own website, then you can, uh, you can have a lot more influence over you know, what you show and, and things like that. We call it the pro plan white label. But the out of the box is you can put uh, your description in here. Okay. Uh... Can you use C2 to simply build a verifiable track record? And what does that Absolute. cost? Absolutely. So uh, to understand a little bit about pricing, you can come over to collective2.com, hit pricing. Uh, make this a little bit bigger. So here's the pricing for, uh, for trade leaders. We have a starter plan, which is $19 a month, all the way up to the professional, which I was just talking about. The sweet spot is this $39 because it does allow you to do certain things in terms of the model portfolio size. The starter has a uh, is restricted to futures and Forex and a different model portfolio size. So I would say the basic plan is going to cover most of your needs just to build a, a verifiable track record. Okay. Is there a way for investors to search for strategies by filtering out various stats as opposed to the few columns sorting you showed? Yeah, so we have a pretty in-depth, uh, great question. I didn't spend as much time. So let me switch over to the investor view. This is a user that is logged in as a leader. So let me, um, let me switch over to a sample investor. Um, these are demo, demo users, by the way. I'm not showing anybody's real um, investor login or anything. Uh, okay, so um, if I come over here to, uh, to discover strategies, we have 
this view, which is a little bit more of a, a colorful marketing view, it has the thumbnail and stuff here, and you can sort by a couple things here by trade zone strategy, which I should have gotten into. That that's a that's um, a designation that you can get as a trade leader if you are actually using one of the submission methods, meaning you're you're sending signals from a broker that we support using a live account through the data feed. So if you're doing that, we give you what's called a trade zone strategy badge and designation. Um, there are there are some investors that like when uh, when a trader, of course, has skin in the game. So that's the trade zone strategy. So you can filter from from these various filters that you see here. But really, if you want to get more granular, you'd go over to the grid. And the grid is this long, uh, this very very detailed view. It looks like an Excel spreadsheet. And here you can put in all kinds of filters. I just cleared all the filters. But if I wanted to. Um, if I wanted to choose all, all various columns, I could choose all these various columns that you can see here. It's a pretty, pretty, pretty powerful tool. So um, this is going to allow you to sort by all these various factors, starting unit size, profit factor, sharp ratio, Sortina. So the grid is the way to go there. We also have another feature we just released called Portfolio Time Machine, which is pretty cool. Um, so just as I started to talk about some of the shortcomings of, of backtesting, I'll talk, to, I'll talk about actually going back in time, but the difference between this and backtesting is these are the actual real-time walk-forward trade results from real strategies that we're trading in real time at the time, so it's not backtest results, but what you can do with the portfolio time machine is you can come up with starting capital, then you can go down and filter by stocks, options, futures, or forex, and you can look at the various strategies, allocate capital to them, allocate sizing to them, and then you can construct essentially a portfolio and go back in time and say, what if... I actually started following the strategy the way I constructed it a year ago. Well, in some instances, of course, you have to pick strategies that have at least a year's worth of data. So mess around with the portfolio time machine. It just came out of, I think it's still in beta. Very, very, very powerful. We've even had some hedge fund managers that have contacted us about really liking this tool because again, they're not, they're not back testing what could have happened based on hypothetical strategies. They, again, all hypothetical performance but these are the real trades that the data is based on. So you can actually create a portfolio and see how it would have performed had you started following it in the past. And by the way, the performance includes all the subscriptions and commissions and fees associated with following that strategy in real time. Okay. Uh, let's see, this one's kind of long, so I'm gonna try to read it first so I can understand. Again, we have a we have a, a thread on the AMA called the Ask Me Anything. I think you could probably just look at you know Collective Two, Ask Me Anything. You're welcome to do that there too. And then my email address is Rod R O D is in dog at Collective Two dot com. If you'd like to um, like to email me, also I'm I think I'm the only Rod Casilli on LinkedIn or Roderick uh, R O D E R I C K Roderick Casilli at LinkedIn. If you use LinkedIn. And then it's R. Casilli is my Skype handle, too, if you use Skype. I'm the only R. Casilli on Skype, too. All right. When uh, stops are manually moved during a trade from a catastrophic stop to break-even, or break-even plus one, are those signals transmitted to VSC2 as well? So the answer is it really depends on your submission method. So let's talk about one where you're not actually using your brokerage account. Let's say you have, uh, you're using NinjaTrader to trade a future strategy that you're publishing to Collective2, but you're using a paper account. Uh, on Ninja or Sim. Uh, the answer in that case is that uh, Collective 2 only sees uh, actual fills. So if you have stops and targets and they're trailing and they're doing all these things, we don't, we don't know about them. They're not resting on, any, on our server in any, any kind of way. The way we find out about them is when they're actually filled on your platform and hit. The moment that happens, those orders are sent to the platform and then they're executed as fast as possible in the market order. We didn't talk a lot about the methodologies that we use there's some smart market orders and some other things, but suffice to say, um, we don't know about anything in in many instances unless you uh, unless the order is filled. If you're using a live broker account, we do know about the order and that order is resting on the exchange. If you are using our seed to quick trade, we know about that that order and that's that's if you're using our website. So the answer is it depends on the methodology that you're using. In some instances, yes; in some instances, no. Okay. Uh, 
Is there a way where I could only charge a fee to investor if I had a profitable month and decline the fee if I had a negative month? Awesome question. Yes, we are working on that as well as uh, we're working on a lot of, so it's a great question. It's called uh, uh, pay when profitable. And a lot of investors ask for it. A lot of trade leaders want to start talking about it. It's a great, great idea. It's important to point out that, that the, the model is based on subscriptions, right? So you, you can't chart, get, get compensated based on performance or based on, um, uh, based on transactions or based on a percentage of assets or any of those things. But you can uh, affect whether you charge someone your basic subscription or not. So we're working on that. It's probably a fall kind of release, and it's going to be included in a cool feature set where uh, when you're over here on this, uh, this page here, which is the, the portfolio page, if I just go back to it real quick, um, by the way, we're working on some really cool ec virtual equity stuff where people can actually build portfolios and see all their virtual equity as well. But if I come back here, ah, darn it, sorry. Um, anyway, I'm not going to click around anymore. I don't know what this user's permissions are. But essentially, the, the page that I was showing that has the performance graph and, and has the descriptions and the statistics, we're going to allow trade leaders to actually market on that page a lot more. So if you had a coupon offer, you could, when someone comes to your page, they can see a drop down and it'll say, you know, it's 10% uh, off the subscription fee this month, or I, I offer a pay only when profitable uh, payment methodology. And you could choose to set that up where they pay you the $100 subscription if you made $1, or you have to, the high watermark is the 100, whatever the subscription is. So they have, you have to at least earn the subscription before it's charged. It's gonna be really cool stuff. Great question. Okay. Uh, do you have a connector for Ninja? Absolutely. We have uh, a couple of different ways you can uh, connect to Ninja. We have what's called Platform Transmit for Ninja, which is can be run as either a strategy or an indicator. I prefer to run it as an indicator. It works for Ninja 7 and Ninja 8. Uh, if you're trading a live uh, Ninja account, uh, like with Ninja Brokerage or using Ninja for um, any, other, any other futures firm that still supports it, which ain't many, uh, you can, as long as it's a rhythmic or CQG connection, you can trade your live account true and that's a direct connection that that's the that's the best way to do it because it's a, a real-time direct connection where we're just listening in on the data feed and picking up the order there okay you go to collective2.com and just and hit the there's a little uh i mentioned this before there's a little search icon at the top and you just type in ninja trader and that'll bring back a number of different articles alternatively you can always go to how to how to collective 2.com that's how to dot collective 2.com that takes you to our knowledge base same thing just type in type in ninja trader and you're going to get every article under the sun about how to use ninja trader with collective 2. okay is there um a list i guess the brokers that on our brokers the platforms that, that are that you allow to do platform transmit um, yeah, so that's a good qu good question. So the answer to that is if you come over here to Collective 2 and then go to Brokers, I know this is a little small, um, any, any broker that you see here, we support their platforms as well. So uh, Interactive Brokers, it's TWS. So if you're using Interactive Brokers, you could use TWS. You can also use NinjaTrader with Interactive Brokers, in which case um, that would work as well. Tradeavate is a new... Uh, a new broker on the scene there on IB2 Dorman. You can use their uh, HTML5 web-based or whatever, TradePro, smaller firm out of Austin, Trade King is now owned by Ally, Amp, Daniels, FXCM. So any of the any of the platforms that are associated with the brokers that you see here are generally available. Not not in every instance. There might be a connection to Sierra or something that we don't support because it's using a different data feed. Okay. Uh, we ran over on time, so I'm going to make this the last question. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like without stop or limit orders being broadcasted to all followers, their performance will be different if they follow fills and try to catch up. Is that correct? Mm, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure. I um, so uh, the 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 architecture of Collective Two is is an auto trading sync cloud based syncing technology, which 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 means as I mentioned before, 
um, the source of truth is Collective 2, regardless of how this, the signal gets to us. So the best way to think of Collective 2 is just like a, a re another online broker. So in the case of um, someone just using uh, our website directly, I'm not going to poke around anymore. If you just use our website directly and type, put your order into the website, your stops and targets and everything are resting there. They're resting on the exchange for, for your strategy to get filled. As soon as they get filled, then that order, and that could have been a buy stop, sell stop, limit order, market order, it doesn't matter. The, the nature of the, the fill or the order type for the fill, at that point, we randomize all of the subscribers to that strategy and fill, uh, fill that trade at market. So there are market conditions, and I mentioned this during the presentation, there are market conditions that are not ideal to be trading around if you're trying to uh, get good fill prices for, uh, for a lot of subscribers. And what happens is our trade leader community just begins to understand that. And there are certainly, there are drawbacks. There'll be some types of instruments you shouldn't trade at the open because they're not liquid enough and the market makers are going to screw you and or screw everybody and uh, provide some bad fills. But once you learn that, um, you can begin to make some small adjustments to account for liquidity and, uh, and execution for your strategies. As I showed, you know, that simplicity trading, there's an example of, I don't know at what time that order came in, but you saw there was probably at least 150 or 200 contracts that were filled um, at market with not a single tick of slippage for that particular instrument across, what was it, 50 or 60 different independent accounts. Okay. Uh, I think you said that was it. Yep. If you have any more no? questions, I have posted the link in the chat to the AMA. So please feel free to uh, go there and post your questions publicly. I really would suggest to do that so that way if someone has the same question, they can be answered and everyone see it. If not, Rod has given his email. And please feel free to shoot him an email with your question as well. Hey, thank you, everybody. I really appreciate your time and for sticking around here and uh, um, you know, to your trading success and trade like community. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it, Terry. Absolutely. Thank you for your time, your information, and uh, the great webinar today. All right, thanks. Bye-bye.